Welcome to part 3 of my video tutorials on how to use Adobe Camera Raw, how to edit your raw files. This one's called the ins and outs of Adobe Camera Raw because I want to show you how to get files into it and what to do to get files out of it. Now we're starting today in uh, Adobe Bridge. This is something that comes with the full fat Adobe Suites. It's not something you get with Photoshop Elements but nevertheless all it is really is a glorified version of Windows Explorer but it enables me to show you what happens when you edit a raw file so we're just going to double click on this file that I've got here and it opens in Adobe Camera Raw today I'm showing you the bottom of the screen rather than the top of the screen because this is the sort of area we're going to be talking about unfortunately this window won't close anymore so I can only show you a bit of the screen. Um, anyway we're going to make a couple of edits to our file just to uh, rather arbitrarily. Uh, these, I've shown you all these knobs and if you haven't seen part one and part two then go visit those and you'll find out what I'm doing over here. Now down the bottom here we've got three buttons. Open image will open it in Photoshop. Cancel will obviously cancel it. And the done button will record the changes that I've just made in a separate file. Now that's important. Okay so I'm going to press done and we go back and we have now have a new file uh, alongside of the old one called exactly the same name but with an XMP at the end. Now I can open this in Notepad. Normally you wouldn't bother, but uh, this is just to show you what happens. Now if we look down here, the brightness has changed from plus 50 to plus 3. The color temperature has changed slightly. I can't remember what the original setting was, but it's now 5050. Uh, and so on and so forth. All the changes I've made, the shadows, the black button, I think that's that's what they call the shadows, uh, has now gone down to naught, whereas it was on 5 in the first place. So this document records all the changes that I made in Adobe Camera Raw. Okay, now this is the important thing. This file hasn't changed at all, but viewing it in here, it reflects the changes that I've made, which are recorded in this file. Now, just to prove the point, if I delete this file then everything goes back to as it was before. So this is what we mean by non-destructive editing. This file hasn't been changed, it's merely altered by the other file. Now to go on and show you more non-destruction, uh, if we take it back into Adobe Camera Raw, it's now back in its original condition, so uh, we just adjust the brightness again, twiddle a few knobs for the sake of it. Now if I press open image, as I said, that will open it in Photoshop. Uh, right, here we go. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do anything further to it right now. All I'm going to do is to try to save it. So save, control S, and up comes the save as box not the save box and you find that there is no such thing as a CR2 on here so if I want to save that file I've got to save it as a JPEG or a TIFF or all these many other things or Photoshop PSD if I was making layers or whatever but I cannot save over the top of my original file and that's the whole point. They are totally unalterable. I was going to say indestructible, but they are destructible because you can just delete it. Uh, but that's the whole point. Not alterable in any way whatsoever. That's what we mean by non-destructive editing. That file, unless you actually delete it, will remain the same forever and ever. So we can always go back and edit it when we get a new version of Adobe Crayon Raw with new flashy things or our skills get a little bit better. So just coming back into Camera Raw, I want to show you this side which 
in my opinion, is a very useful part of the whole thing. So we've we've made our corrections to the file, have we? Yes. Uh, we'll make a, make a few more just for the sake of it, and we now want to save it as a JPEG or whatever. We don't really need to go into Photoshop because there's nothing further to do. So we can click on this button here, Save Image, and get a whole new wonderful screen. Now, if I was in uh, Photoshop Elements and using the Adobe Chroma Raw version in there, the only choice I would have would be DNG, which is Digital Negative. Um, this is a kind of file which is very similar to a CR2 file in the sense that uh, it opens back into Adobe Camera Raw. So uh, I've not quite seen the purpose of that because if I'm going to use uh, that kind of file then I'll just keep it in a, as a CR2 file. Why, why have two files instead of one? But I'm sure there must be some kind of purpose for it. But in the full fat Adobe version, I've got all the usual suspects, JPEG, TIFF, PSD. So I can, without going into Photoshop, I can change, I can save my file as a JPEG. And I've got the usual quality control here. I would normally use maximum. Uh, incidentally, I would, I would use maximum for if I was going to print the thing and probably quality 8 if I'm going to use it on the web. Some people use less, but I like the best I can get. Okay, uh, you can rename in many different ways. So I've called this one Belgium Test Shot. Should I have loads of pictures, I can... What I wanted to do was just put a little thing there, and now I can add a number we're going to give it a one digit serial number so it will now be called test one and if I had a load of files then they would be called test one, two, three and four and so on so it would number them sequentially I'm not going to save that because oh also up here I've got a choice of saving it into the same folder that I started with or I can save it in a new location which I can select okay so we're not going to save it for now just want to show you one more thing down the bottom here which is a kind of what would you call it quality size etc um, color space we haven't really talked much about color space but I would strongly recommend that you stay in sRGB uh, depth uh, once again I strongly recommend you stay in 8 bits now this is the interesting one because uh, I can change the size, I can I can increase it, although I'm not sure why I would want to, um, or I can decrease it. So if I was making files for the web, I'd be quite happy with that sort of size, or even smaller. Um, the, right, the resolution refers to the print size. Resolution doesn't mean a thing if you're making files for the web. Uh, but it does make a difference if you're making prints and I would normally go for 300 pixels an inch but uh, they seem to default here on, on 240 so maybe that's acceptable you get an opportunity to sharpen the picture in different ways I haven't really seen a lot of difference but I, I use them religiously you know, so if I'm making a picture for the web, I'll sharpen it for screen. If not, I'll sharpen it for glossy paper or matte paper, whatever I'm going to print to. Okay, and I've no idea what that does. <laughs> I'll, I'll find out one day and let you know. Okay, so that's it really, how to get pictures in and how to get pictures out. And most importantly, what non-destructive editing actually means.